Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. <laughs> Good morning, Midford fans. <laughs> My name is Janet Winkler, and I'm the mayor of the town of Hudson, a.k.a. Midford. with the 
maintain. Uh, our hub station manager, Janice. <laughs> and Ronnie, are they in here? No, they're not. Okay, okay. Be sure and say thank you to Pam and Ronnie when you see them out and about. Back there, Pam. Uh, I'd like to say a special uh, thank you to the hub station steering committee led by Kathy Carroll. Kathy's in the back. Yay, Kathy. They were responsible for the private fundraising. So a big, big job, which they did extremely well. I'd like to say thank you to our town public work staff, and I think they're around today. Our Hudson Police Department, uh, I think you've seen many of those this morning, and uh, certainly without their guidance, uh, this day would not be accomplished. The Lenore Rotary Impact Club, and you've seen a lot of volunteers working, uh, and they, they're members of the uh, Impact Club. Jim and Kim Goss, and Warren Gruber, our food vendors outside today, so you will get to know them pretty well later. Uh, the American Legion, Paradise Subs, uh, the Bird Smokehouse, the Ed Rowland Food Truck, Sanders Country Store, and I think I understand you might be able to get some ice cream. Uh, the Vintage Cafe, and the local coffee thing. I think a lot of you have already had your coffee this morning. I'd like to say a special thank you to Keith Smith. Keith, would you stand? He's the director of our <laughs> He's absolutely a genius. And if you haven't seen the play, if you get to see it tonight, you will see his marvelous works. Not only is he the director of this play, he has done all of our dinner theaters in this very room since we acquired this building. Um, and keep a, a special thank you to your actors uh, who are volunteers uh, for their dedication and their wonderful performance. Please thank them for us. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to Poonstone, who all got to see the concert last night. <laughs> most amazing talent, and they're from Caldwell County. We are very, very proud of the talent in this county. <laughs> My sincere thanks to Jan Karen and her partnership with the town of Hudson. We will be eternally grateful for her belief in us. We hope you enjoy your day. And if we can be of assistance to you in any way, we'll all be around today. So thank you, Mitford fans, for being here.
making them aware of the project and asked for permission to contact her. To my surprise, Jan agreed to speak with me and to make a long story short, including finding the courage to call her. <laughs> what began as a free room given to Jan by the town for book club meetings and literary classes turned into the incredible museum and bookstore that you will see today. As devoted readers, I know all of you would have a story to tell about what the Mitford series has meant to you, the effect it had on your life during a tough time, and how you, like me, go back often to find the peace, love, and comfort that you find in Jan's books. Working with Jan over the past year and a half as the museum was developed has been an amazing experience. She is as beautiful on the outside and on the inside as anyone I have ever known in my life. She has a strong work ethic, a delightful sense of humor, and a deep faith. I can tell you lots of things about Jan that you already know. You know that she is a number one New York Times best-selling author, that she has sold millions of books, has won numerous awards and recognitions, and you are certainly aware of her God-given talent. Having the opportunity to work with Jan and a team of incredibly talented individuals has been a blessing to all of us at Hope Station. Jan has a good, kind, and loving heart, and she worked tirelessly to make the Mitford Museum a special place that will endure for years to come, and it is a gift that she shares with all of us. It is my great pleasure to share this special day with all of you and welcome our much-loved friend and author, Jan Karen, to the Hub Station Arts Center stage. Uh, I wish you could see yourself. You 
this book without covers is full of stories about the life of a young girl in Hudson, in the school, this lovely art center uh, it has become. It's stories about my ancestors and how I got here and how so many of us got here. Um, I'm eighth generation on this soil. Stories about the early influences that helped bring forth all the books that you have so graciously loved and supported. I believe one of the reasons you love Mitford is that in these books, you feel my love and respect for you. Actually, I know you. I grew up with people like you. I went to school with people like you. And in fact, I am people like you. So when I write and you read, it's a nice combo, isn't it? We understand each other. We get it together. You know, we share some of the same childhood tragedies, some of the same anxieties and doubts, optimism and glad hope. And when this small, homemade, nonprofit museum was coming to life over a period of two and a half years, I was forced to take a long and sometimes painful ride through my history, some of which was lived right here in Hudson. I was forced to remember a lot of stuff I thought I had put away and locked away forever. All of you have probably put away some things you think, well, that's fine. All those artifacts and photos, letters, family history you'll see in the museum, I had to sift through every piece of that. And what I saw along the way was how God was always leading me, guiding me, allowing me to suffer if that's what was needed, forging my character, and tenderly nursing my wounds, giving me courage to move again. All this and more God was doing for me and with me because he loved me. But I didn't know how to love God. I haven't loved our Creator all my life, not by a long shot. I was as lost as a needle in a haystack until the age of 42. And that is exactly half my life. Half my life as a needle in a haystack. Well, heaven knows my grandmother, Miss Fanny, and you'll see a lot about her in the museum. She tried to pound me, didn't <laughs> Reading aloud from the Old Testament, she thought that ought to do it. Well, <laughs>
told us, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I didn't even know I was doing that, but it didn't take. <laughs> We hear people praying for us. We hear stirring sermons along the way. Rarely, but along the way. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you all have this <laughs> Well, let's just see who's bad. <laughs> who's bad? All right. Who's good? All right. Any Catholics? Episcopalian? Beautiful mystery. My, the, the, my 
Westchester's farmhouse also had the side porch where Dooley and Lace sat on the glider and the little side room where Dooley slept during his summers with the Owens. Now, when I was three years old, and as I've been doing this, by the way, getting ready to look through all the artifacts and all that, I've discovered that I have a memory of myself as much, much younger. I mean, I'm finding myself again, really. When I was three years old, my grandmother was still cooking, great grandmother was still cooking on the hearth. She was still drawing water with a hand pump. She was still washing clothes in an iron pot over a yard fire and lighting the house with kerosene lamps. What a wonderful experience that was for a three-year-old who would one day become an author who is already picking up like a Hoover vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Everything I So what it amounted to really was that I had the privilege of seeing the last of the American frontier just two miles from here. Now what else? You're going to see that iron pot, that very iron pot. Imagine lugging that iron pot that be all the way to California, all the way back. I mean, I've been a lot of places in my life. So the fact that I even had accumulated and kept so many private and personal and beautiful items of my past is rather miraculous. So you'll see the churn I used as a child to bring butter on the screen porch and the bench we sat on in our Sunday afternoon dinners. What ever happened to the Sunday afternoon dinner? We just go to Arby's. <laughs> So nearly everything you see in the Medford Museum will be the real thing. Actually used and often loved in my life and in one way or another, helping to point the way to Medford. There's just not much fakery in the Medford Museum, except for a pie. And you'll know it when you see it. <laughs> Where's Kim? Right, Kim? Kim found this pie in a junk store, an antique store called Dead People's Stuff. <laughs>
So you'll also find a lot of things very dear to my heart, and it's even the desk lamp that lighted over a million words of Mitford manuscript. Then you're going to get what we have really worked hard to give you as a special bonus. Happy Endings Bookstore and Gift Shop. <laughs>
tell you about our levels of giving. For example, you can become a member at the Buddy Road level. <laughs>
We are going to delve into the deep and sometimes hidden riches of Jan's beautiful writing together. So what makes Mifford special? What makes it different? What makes it an almost unique publishing phenomenon? And I had a chance this morning to speak briefly with Molly from the UVA Library. She's going to be talking particularly about the publishing history of Mitford and what made it such an amazing phenomenon. So I hope you'll all come hear her as well. Um, so here's just a quick overview. Finding extraordinary beauty in ordinary lives. No cussing, no sex, well, no explicit sex.